In 2016, I had just started my third year studies doing applied statistics with computing in Masena University here in Kenya. Shortly after, I deferred my studies to go start working as a sports data scientist. At that moment, I really didn't know it was called data science. All I knew is that I was using statistics together with some coding skills to help in the sports sector. In the beginning, I was purely using Excel and its formulas, but I later learned about Python, the programming language, and learned that how its object-oriented state was very helpful in things like model creation. Since then, I have been involved in data science for almost a decade now, and I have learned a lot, honestly. I have made a lot of mistakes, but I think now I have this good framework of how I would have learned data science if I had to start over again. Disclaimer, there is no one correct path of learning data science because data science is not something that you just learn, it's something that you practice and it's very specific to a domain that you are working in. So in today's video, we are going to see what is the perfect roadmap of learning data science in 2023. The first thing you need to understand is the data science pipeline. What do I mean by the pipeline? The data science pipeline is the whole scope of the beginning of the data science up to the end, from the idealization to the collection up to the end where you deploy and communicate the results. To explain it a little bit better, the first step we'll talk about is idealization, which involves understanding how having the business acumen to know what you need to solve. The second part is the data collection part. The data collection part involves maybe using databases to extract data or web scraping, which is basically collecting data from the internet and putting it in your statistical tool or your coding environment or using APIs, which are application programming interfaces, which is just a way of computers communicating together and sharing information and data using commands like requests and responses. After acquiring the data, we move on to the next step in the pipeline, which is the model development. In model development, there's a little bit of data engineering, machine learning, deep learning. After creating this data product through machine learning, etc., we move on to the next step where we deploy these models. In model deployment, we have usage of cloud platforms, little bit of software development, MLOps, DevOps, etc. After this, we move on to the business action, which basically involves communication, a little bit of data storytelling so that you can explain your findings and some business knowledge being passed. With understanding of this whole pipeline, this is what we call a full stack data scientist, meaning you be able meaning being able to take different roles and contributing to different projects in various different ways. What do I mean by this? You can be a data analyst in a certain project, be a machine learning engineer in another project, or find yourself deploying these machine learning models in another project. For today's roadmap, I want to concentrate with working with the data, basically manipulating the data to get some inference from the data. What do I mean by this? If you have data, you are either answering a question, seeing how X affects Y, or creating a data product, meaning predicting the effects of X on Y. Answering a question is where data analysis comes in, while creating data products is where more machine learning comes in. You can find, you can find a video up here of me explaining the machine learning pathway, where you will see where the data analysis part comes in, the data science what comes in, how answering questions and creating data products differ from each other. So for you to be able to answer questions using data or create data products, the first thing you need to learn is the code part of it. Start with Python. We can go with R or Python, but I highly prefer Python to R, and you can also see my video explaining why I prefer Python to R up there. Learning Python, you learn the basics Understanding the variables, the data types, the data structures, the loops, the while loop, the for loop, understanding the conditional statement, the if, else, elif statements, then understanding how to create functions to solve these things, 
using numerous examples so that you can understand how the object oriented or how Python as a programming language works. Later, you can now embark on looking at libraries. You can look at visualization libraries such as Matplotlib, Seaborn, Plotly, etc. Using this, you can understand how visualization of the data works and how to choose which visualizations for which specific purpose, if it's categorical, if it's uh, numerical, etc, etc. Then you can learn of other libraries like Pandas, which is very, very important in working with data and doing EDA, which is exploratory data analysis. Coding in data science is not more of the pure coding that is done by people like software engineers. Coding in data science more or less involves leveraging tools created by other people. For example, a very great understanding in Pandas is way, way important than pure Python skill because Pandas will help you in data manipulation, data analysis, etc, etc. After learning this and understanding how to work with Python and using these various visualization libraries and the data analysis libraries, etc., you embark directly to working on projects. Go to Cargo, you can find simple EDA projects and exploratory data analysis projects of very, very many data sets. Work with them, work around them to understand how these things work. Code along with the code that is there so that you can see how it works and how each line helps out leveraging the information that you had learned prior. After learning this, you have understood how to answer questions using data. You can now embark on seeing the effects of X on Y or creating data products. And this is where machine learning comes. Machine learning is a machine learning without expressly being programmed to, which is basically learning on its own using algorithms. It can use classification algorithms, regression algorithms, clustering algorithms, etc. Where a good example of using classification algorithms in something like logistic regression is determining if something lies between A, B, or C, or A and B, basically discrete data points. For example, working with the Titanic data set, you can try and predict if a person will survive or not survive in the Titanic given the information about that person. For regression, it's dealing with continuous variables and things like predicting house prices and seeing how things like predicting house prices and using information about the houses and the location and the features of the houses to see if you can predict a continuous variable, which is the price. Clustering algorithms involves data that is not labeled, hence taking information like for customers and trying to cluster them into groups. All this is very easily learned and once you learn this, you'll be able to understand how data products are created from this. You have to learn all the various algorithms that are used in these types of machine learning. For clustering, we have logistic regression, random forest, etc. For regression, we have regression, linear regression. We also have things like support vector regressor. Also, random forest can be used as a regression. And clustering algorithms, we have things like k-means, etc., etc. After learning this, you embark directly again to projects, projects, projects. Go to Kaggle, look at different classification algorithms, regression algorithms, clustering algorithms, etc., and try to understand how they all work together. Seeing how supervised learning is done and unsupervised learning is done. With this, you can work with different projects, update your portfolio so that you keep on understanding how to work with these things. After this, you have now to learn how to communicate your findings. You have to know how to talk with the technical team and the technical team, and this is very helpful in creating value for the data product that you have created. Then keep on working on more projects and trying to explain them, working on project, more projects and trying to explain them, updating your portfolio as you move on. After this, you have to look at your specific interest. If you want to work with language, you can look at natural language processing, and look at various algorithms like the naive base, etc. And if you want to work with industries or organizations, you'll have to learn something like SQL so that you can extract data from databases so that you can work with that. And if you are looking at things like computer vision, you'll have to look at deep learning and look more on things like neural networks, etc. All these depending on the interest that you have. 
With this, you can now update your portfolio, make it better and better. And since we are living in a world where people don't really concentrate on what you've learned, but more on what you can do using these projects, you can really boost yourself in becoming more noticeable in the market than any other person or your peers. The other things in the pipeline can come after. Because there is access to the data, you don't have to really understand web scraping in the beginning, but later on you can go and understand how to scrape data, you can see how you can scrape with things like real estate data, work with it, then do the data analysis, data product creation, and then after learning this, now you can embark on the other parts of the data pipeline. Because once you understand how to answer business questions or answer questions using data and then creating data products, now you can go and learn how web scraping is done using beautiful SOAP HTML5 lib, using this how you can extract data or using APIs and how RESTful APIs work. And once you learn how to extract the data and you know how to create the models, you can now embark on deployment of the models using web frameworks like Django or Flask, etc. And this is the way I would learn data science in 2023 if I had to start over again. Thank you very much for watching this video. Throw in a like, subscribe so that you don't miss any more of this great content. Thank you very much for reaching the end of the video. See you in the next one. Peace.